Lucky people don't just get lucky in life. Ladies and gentlemen, on this trip, which we can all start and shape, there is a journey. Today, I'd like to take you on a trip through the business secrets of the world's richest people. Take a moment to picture ourselves in front of a large painting. In this mural, the world's richest people are interacting with each other and sharing their stories and secrets. They're not superheroes and don't have superpowers, but these people do have something special that we can learn from and use in our own lives. Let's take a moment to think about ourselves before we look at that painting. Let's ask ourselves, what do I want out of life? How am I going to get it? Success doesn't come from daydreaming. It comes from being patient, persistent, and always learning. We're now going to enter the world of the successful and look into the secrets they've been keeping for a long time. Each of these secrets opens a new door, giving us a chance to grow and thrive. Come with me as we learn the secrets to success. I promise that when you leave this room, you'll have memories and a strong desire to make a difference in your life and the lives of those around you. Success is like a river that never stops. You can only find it by following the steps of those who have been here before you. My friend, I want to take you on an epic trip to the top of the tallest mountain. Success is like a mountain. It stands tall and mysterious, but the golden light at its peak opens up a world of options. Have you ever thought about how some people reach the top of that mountain while others stay stuck in the fog of average? What hidden treasures and secrets does this, this mountain hide that only a few brave people can find? Today I'm going to reveal the secrets of that peak, the secrets of those who have reached the top and changed the course of history forever. However, before I tell you these secrets, I want to encourage you to consider the idea that you all have the power to climb that peak and achieve the success you desire. Are you ready to start? Do you want to be successful? Are you ready to keep an open mind? Follow your interest and let inspiration lead you? If the answer is a strong yes, I promise you that this journey will change you. Get ready, because we're going to look into the keys to success and learn how to use them ourselves. Allow us to begin. The best way to predict the future is to create it, reads a beautiful line I just read. This means having a vision. Whether your dream is in the sky or the air, you need to build a base for it. Men and women who rise from poverty and darkness to fame and honor are always people who have a vision of what they could be, have, and do much better than what they are. Everyone has had a time when they were young and wished they could grow up and have their own cars. As we grew up, we dreamed of having our own houses and families. We also had the chance to travel and see Europe as we get older. We made all of our dreams come true. It's great that we usually manage to reach our goals. What's wrong is that we have too few goals. We don't get excited or enthusiastic about them even when we reach them. Instead of focusing on the things you need to do, picture big goals. That's the important thing. Make sure you know exactly what you want to happen. One of the keys to peak success is to do this. People who work at their best are focused on getting results. Losers and their artists tend to be interested in doing things. They put in a lot of work on task orientation. There are times when they work very hard and longer than you, but they lose sight of the end goal. They understand why the strategic thinker said it was the worst thing in the world to do something very well. It didn't need to be done at all. A lot of us work very hard to do very quickly things that don't need to be done at all. What results do you expect from me at work? This is a key question. What kinds of things? But what results am I meant to get at work? Why am I on the payroll? Is another important question you can ask yourself. What are you expecting from me now that I'm on the payroll? It is assumed that we will make sales and we're only working when we are doing something that directly helps us reach that goal. Isn't that true? Of course, then, why do we do the other things? I'm sure that we do other things because they are fun and easy, not because they are hard and need to be done. If I may say something that wasn't part of the discussion. I think the main reason people fail in life is because it's too easy. We always get what we want in the fastest and easiest way possible. The fastest and easiest way to get somewhere in life is almost always the way to fail. It's short-term relief for long-term pain. It's not what it should be, but what it is for fun and ease today. Finally, near the end of our lives, when it's past due, we have to do what is tough and important. To be successful, you must be willing and able to set clear goals, know exactly what you want, where you're going, and what results are expected of you, and then focus only on those results. Individuals can't be successful if they can't control their desire to do 
what is hard and important instead of what is enjoyable and simple. Always keep the end result in mind, not the activities. This is especially important when planning your daily tasks and handling your time. Here's a way that has worked for me. Jot down your plans. Make a list of all your goals. By the way, all goals need to be written down. If you don't write down your goals, they're just dreams. As the saying goes, a dream is just a goal that doesn't have any power behind it. Write down your goals, making sure they are clear and detailed. Then, every morning, rewrite your main goals in the first person, as if they already exist. Every morning, write down your main goals again. You should be able to finish this in two to four minutes, or even five. It only needs one line. Suppose your goal is to make $50,000 a year. Every morning, write, I earn $50,000 a year. If your goal is to be the best real estate agent, write, I am an excellent seller in my field. If your goal is to lose weight or have a certain kind of life, write your main goals in the first person, as if they already exist. Then every night, do something else for five to 10 minutes instead of watching TV. Say, wait a minute, I need to review my progress right before you turn it on. Then look back over what you've done and ask yourself, what did I do well today? What did I do right that brought me closer to my goals? The second question is, what would I do differently if I could live today over again? By the way, those are the four steps. Write down and rewrite your goals every morning. Look them over at night and ask yourself, what did I do well? What did I do today that helped me reach my goals? Why would I do something different if I could live that day over? Over the next 30 days, ask yourself those two questions. It will help you get more done than in the last six months. I've never seen a better way to do this. It's something I learned a while back. Just write down your goals again every morning. Make it clear. We don't set enough goals or goals that are high enough. You can have anything you want. Imagine that you can have anything you want. As long as you can remember it all the time. If you're sure you want something and are ready to pay for it, you can get it. Being clear is important. Make sure you know what you want. Make it clear what you need to do to get it. Be sure of what you want. Be clear when you walk, talk, and act. That's all there is to say about the truth. A lot of people get into trouble by being vague or if you prefer by being very careful about what they say. People have already eaten lunch by the time they finally say it. And being clear and straight is a key part of being successful. For the record, for an interesting study they did last year, they asked a lot of women executives, like, if you had to tell someone something bad about their career that was going to affect their lives and you've known this for a long time, how would you go about telling them? Each person then explained what they would do. They would pick the right time, start by talking about things they both had in common, shut the door, and block out any other noise. Anyway, they kept going back and forth, each trying to find a roundabout way to get to the point. Then they asked, how would you like to be informed about this same issue? And, and each of them replied, I would like to be informed directly. I would like someone to tell me the news clearly. Because we know we can handle anything, we all want to be treated fairly. But we think everyone else is too weak to handle it. We move slowly and we don't tell them the news because of this. Also, telling them the news can sometimes make things worse than they need to be. To sum up, be direct, use clear words, and be clear in what you do. Make sure people know where you stand, what you've said, and what you mean. This is very, very important, and you need to practice it. Also, you have to practice all of these habits and traits in order to get better at them. I thought about the idea of greatness for a while and saw something I hadn't seen before, like something had come to the surface of my mind. I noticed that, that every successful person I had studied had made a promise to be the best at what they did. After making up my mind to be the best at that thing, I started to look around, compare, and talk to people. Almost every month, I talked to tens of thousands of people. It was rare to find a wealthy person who wasn't great at what they did. Being competent and determined to get better at what you're doing are two things that you must have in order to be successful. People today are very competitive, so if you're not good at what you do, you won't get far. Unless you win the prize, if you work hard to be the best, you will be successful. You have a lot of other things on your mind, but if you decide to be the best, it will change everything about you. Five or ten percent of the people are the best. Some salespeople make eighty percent of the sales. And the worst businesses make only twenty percent of the sales.
This is known as the 80 20 rule, or the Pareto Principle. What's the difference? In this case, the change is the link between 16 and 1. 80% of people in the bottom 20% make 16 times as much as the first 20%. What does it mean that the top 20 are 16 times better than the bottom 80%? They worked 16 times as many hours and went to school 16 times as many years. Are they 16 times more handsome? Are they 16 times anything else? No, but the top 20% of these people make 16 times what the rest of them do. A few years ago, the Prudential Company did a study in which they compared the wages of the thousands of agents they had across the United States. The 80-20 rule told them that 80% of their business was being done by 20% of their agents. That's right, they had everything on the computer. What is the average income of the top 20% compared to the 80%? They asked again. That means that the top 4% of people are mathematicians. How much did they find the average income to be? What they found was that the top 4% made 32 times as much as the bottom 80%. They thought it was cool, so they ran it again. They found that the top 0.8% of earners, or the top 20% of the top 20%, made an average of 54 times as much as the average earner in the bottom 80%. As a result, they discovered that in every state and big city where they had an office with many agents, there was one agent who was selling the same product to the same people at the same price as everyone else. This agent was making 50 times as much as the average adult, even though the economy was bad. One guy in the office was making more than all 50 of the others put together. Isn't that amazing? They found that one of the keys to this was that each of these managers had promised themselves at the start of their careers to be the best. I'll get into this and make a living, they said. I'll get into this and be the best. You have to commit to excellence and become the best. And the great thing is that excellence is a journey, not a goal. You never get there. If you want to be excellent, you need to avoid complacency and happiness. But if you decide to be excellent, everything will be possible for you. One very important thing about being excellent is that you should always do your best and try to do even better. You should remember that the last 5 to 10% of a job or project is usually what makes it worthwhile. But when we get to 90%, we start to drag our feet, put off the papers, make excuses, and do what's fun and easy, instead of what's hard and necessary. And the only way to enjoy something is to do it well. You see, when we do something well, we feel good about ourselves and proud. We feel like winners. Things don't give us anything. They give us nothing. Uh, what you'll notice is that they don't reward us if we do okay work. They don't give us anything. When we do something really well, though, it makes us feel great about ourselves. You don't have to be very different from someone else. You only need to be a little different in the important ways that matter. To do that, all you have to do is set a goal and work toward it. You can change into anything you want. As our investigation into the secrets that make billionaires rich comes to a close, it's important to take the important lessons we've learned to heart. Rich people have a lot of flash and glitz, but they also have a tapestry of strength, discipline, and unwavering dedication. Every story we've looked into and every principle we've broken down shows how strong the human spirit is and how much it can accomplish. But let's not just be amazed by what other people have done. Let's use their success as a stepping stone to reach our own goals. They have been successful because they have left us with a plan or roadmap for how to reach greatness ourselves. While the trip is difficult, it also holds the promise of immense growth and happiness for those brave enough to take it. Don't forget this as you leave this gathering. You are the creator of your fate, the master of your fate. Armed with the knowledge you've gained from today's discussion, go forth with unshakable determination, knowing that every problem is actually a chance to learn and grow. Let the stories of these business giants not only inspire, but also move people to take action. In hard times, let their strength be your compass. And in your quest for your dreams, let their unwavering commitment to greatness be your guide. Leaving with hearts full of hope and minds, full of possibilities, let us know that the path to success is not a destination, but a trip that lasts a lifetime and is full of promise and potential. Thank you, dear friends, for coming to this event. May all of your efforts be a huge success, and may you leave your mark on the pages of history.
Everything you are or ever will be is up to you. You are the master of your own fate, the architect of your own destiny. You are self-made, completely responsible for the quality of your life and for your results. The principle of self-development is one of the vital keys to the psychology of success. Self-development requires self-discipline, hard work, and persistence. It builds character, ability, and self-esteem. The more you work on yourself, the more you like and respect and believe in yourself. The more self-confidence you have, the greater the feeling of personal fulfillment you experience. Men and women who accomplish great things with their lives are not necessarily better or smarter or more gifted than others. They are usually just individuals who have made the efforts necessary to develop their potentials to a greater degree than the ordinary. The wonderful thing about our free society is that you can become just about anything you really want if you are willing to pay the price in terms of hard work on yourself. There's no limit to how far you can go except for the limits you place on yourself. I once read a quote from Abraham Lincoln that had a profound effect on my life. It was written in his diary as a young man in Springfield. It said, I will study and prepare myself, and someday my chance will come. If you study and prepare yourself, your chance will come too. You will meet people unexpectedly who will enable you to utilize your knowledge. You will get phone calls and letters in the mail. You will come across articles and advertisements that lead you to use your skills and abilities. One of the most important of the mental laws is the law of correspondence, which says, as within, so without. Your outer circumstances in every area will correspond with your inner world. Your material and financial world will reflect the quality and quantity of preparation you have engaged in. Every effort, small or large, accumulates and grows like a snowball rolling down a hill. Every act of delayed gratification, discipline, and self-development counts for something. Every extraordinary accomplishment is preceded by thousands of hours of ordinary preparation. Just as a spring becomes a trickle, a trickle becomes a brook, brooks create streams, and finally, many streams create an enormous river that flows inexorably, unstoppably, carrying everything before it to the sea. So it is with self-development. Every achievement that is recognized and applauded is preceded by countless small efforts, failures, disappointments, and setbacks that no one ever sees. You can learn whatever you need to be successful. There is more information available today can help you be more effective than ever before. The smartest and most successful men and women who ever lived have poured the best of everything they know into books, tapes, seminars, and video cassettes. Some of the most valuable information on succeeding in any field is available to you in exchange for a few dollars and some hard, hard work. Would you like to double your income? How about increasing your income 10 times, a thousand percent? Would you like that? If I can show you a simple formula that is virtually guaranteed to work, to double, triple, quadruple your income, would you try it? Most people will say yes, but only about 1 in 20, according to my experience, will actually do it. Here it is, a simple formula. But first, a simple question, do you believe it is possible for you to increase your effectiveness and improve your productivity by 2% over the next month, the next 30 days? Let me put it this way, could you do it if your life depended on it? Of course, you could. One or two small changes in your daily routine, a little bit better time management, a little bit more effectiveness in your key result areas could give you a 2% improvement. Now, having done it the first month, could you do it again the second month? 2% more. How about the third month? Could you, by working steadily on yourself a little bit each day, managing your time a little better, improving your overall productivity, increase your performance and your effectiveness by 2% in the third month? Of course, you could. Almost anyone could if they cared enough to apply themselves. You get onto a learning curve. Well, 2% per month compounded translates into 26% per year. 26% per year productivity improvement through personal development, skill enhancement, and additional training is a reasonable, believable, even modest but surely attainable goal. 26% per year compounded will equal 100% improvement in 3 years, 1000% improvement in 10 years. This simple 2% formula can be the most important success formula you ever learn. Now, here's how it works. You first determine your aim. Do you really want to achieve great financial success in your work? Do you want it badly enough to pay the price in terms of preparation? Assuming the answer is yes, here's what you do. First of all, you stop or dramatically cut back on all those activities that do not contribute anything to your life. Then become an avid reader. Reading is to the mind as exercise is to the body. Reading is vital to your success. Not only does it require total concentration, but you learn things by reading that you cannot learn any other way. There is no substitute for it. In fact, if you read just one book per month to develop or improve yourself in some way, it will put you in the top 1% in terms of personal development. If you read one book per week, 
which you can do if you read one hour per day, that will translate into 52 books per year, 520 books over 10 years. If you read 520 books to improve yourself and enhance your effectiveness at work in a world where the average person reads less than one book per year, do you think it might give you the edge? A critical winning edge that makes all the difference between success and failure? You bet it would. One book per week would so change the course of your life in a positive way that you would be astonished, and it won't take 10 years. You'll begin to see significant changes in the quality of your life and your results within months, sometimes within weeks, sometimes within days. Well, you begin by getting up each morning two hours before your first appointment or before you have to be at work, earlier if necessary. Then, before you leave the house, rewrite your major goals and a brief description of your goals for the day, just a few lines. It takes you a couple of minutes to rewrite those goals and impress them into your mind. This exercise activates your subconscious and gives you a sense of purpose and focus for the hours ahead. Next, and this is very important, listen to educational audio cassettes during traveling time in your car, and if you use public transportation or if you're flying. The average car owner drives 12,000 to 25,000 miles per year, which is as many as 500 to 1,000 hours per year in the car. This translates into 12.5 to 25 40 hour weeks sitting in the car, enjoying prime learning time. This is the equivalent of one to two university semesters. You can become one of the best educated, most highly motivated, well-informed people of our society simply by listening to audio cassettes in your car. If you're not listening to audio cassettes in your car continually, you're missing hundreds of hours of prime learning time, and every hour you miss is going to cost you in lost earnings and diminished potential. The third leg of the triangle of self-development, the first two being reading and listening to audio cassettes, is courses and seminars put on by people who have achieved success in the subjects they're talking about, and this is important. Attend at least four seminars or courses per year, one every three months. Take all the training you can get, and never stop learning. If your company supplies you with training opportunities, take every single one of them. And if your company does not, remember you are totally 100% responsible for your ongoing education. The whole purpose of an education, even up to university level, is simply to teach you how to learn. From then on, it's up to you to apply the lesson. I think that the major difference between winners and losers is their attitude towards spending money on improving themselves. Winners recognize that they are their most precious asset. Winners are always investing in improving the quality of their thinking and the quality of their knowledge. They recognize that the functioning of their mind, more than anything else, is going to determine everything that happens to them, and they're always working on achieving a higher level of mental fitness and mental preparedness. Remember, they say that luck is when preparedness meets opportunity. Winners in almost every field are characterized by the fact that they know more, that they have more practical knowledge acquired through study and experience than do the underachievers. It's as simple as that. Losers always make excuses for not investing in themselves. You've probably all heard the things they say. They say things like, I can't afford it, which means, of course, that they won't afford it. They usually have money for clothes, money for socializing, money for liquor, and money for travel, but they don't have money to invest in their minds. They say, I don't have the time, which means, of course, that they won't make the time to invest in themselves. And the worst of all, they say, I don't need it because I know all that stuff already. Most losers fall into the category of what they call the unconscious incompetent. This is the person who does not know and does not know that he does not know. The truly hopeless case. People with limited education are aware of how little they know relative to how much there is to learn, so they're continually seeking new information. But university graduates often think they've learned everything there is to know, and they stop reading when they leave campus. The bottom line of the losing mentality is that the loser does not believe in himself or herself. The loser doesn't believe that any efforts in self-development would change anything, so they don't even try. Remember, a person who does not read is no better than a person who cannot read. A person who does not work on himself or herself is no better than a person who cannot. Ignorance is one of the greatest enemies of mankind, and today in our wide open society, ignorance is self-inflicted and inexcusable. Here are seven final thoughts on personal development. Number one, begin right now today to become a perpetual learning machine. Read, study, listen to tapes, take courses continually. One hour per day of study in any subject will make you an authority in three years, a national expert in five, and an international authority in seven. Number two, remain teachable, remain open, interested, and curious. In all your life, you will never learn all there is to know about even one subject, even about yourself, for instance. Number three, if you want to be successful, study success. Become an expert on success. Learn proven success methods from others so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Number four, get around other successful people. 
Fly with eagles, don't scratch with turkeys. Learn from them. Ask their advice on what to do, what to read, what courses to take, what takes to listen to, and be willing to help others with advice on success as you learn it. Number five, the human being is an organism, and if you're not growing with the input of new information and ideas, you're stagnating. Most people are stuck in a rut because they stopped growing. Don't let this happen to you. When you stop taking in new information, your mind and your brain begin to atrophy, and you tend to fall into a state of lethargy and depression. It is new information that gets you out of it. Number six, as Jim Rohn says in the audio cassette program Seven Secrets of Wealth and Happiness, work at least as hard on yourself as you do on your job. Work at least as hard on yourself as you do in your job. Remember, you're your most valuable asset. And finally, number seven, the self-respect and self-confidence that comes as a result of learning and growing toward the fulfillment of your potential is the root source of self-esteem and self-worth.